annotation day three. We will be annotating stanzas 10 through 15. So far, we've seen the town of Hamlin. It's beautiful, it's amazing, it's wonderful. The problem is there are rats. The rats are actually very violent. They are biting babies, they're killing cats, they're fighting dogs. They're in people's clothing, they're everywhere. They're eating their food. They're squeaking so loudly, they are a menace. So all of the townsfolk, they go to the mayor, they say, hey mayor, you've got to fix our rat problem because if you don't, we're kicking you out. You're done being mayor. And so he is very, very nervous. Now the problem with our mayor is he's not very good at coming up with ideas. So he racks his brain and he's like, guys, I've got nothing. Once He's thought and thought and he's about to give up. Knock, knock, knock. Someone appears at the door and it's this guy, the Pied Piper. He is known for using magical secret charms music in order to draw creatures after him to exterminate them. And he says, I've done this before with swarms of gnats. I've done it with vampire bats. I'm known for getting rid of menacing creatures. So, Let's make a deal. And the Pied Piper proposes, he says, you give me a thousand guilders and I'm going to rid the town of rats. And the mayor says, 1,000, I'll give you 50,000, take my money. And so they make a deal. The Pied Piper smiles a little smile. He steps into the street and his eyes are sparkling like a candle flame because he knows that what he's about to do is going to be really, really dark and creepy. And so he starts playing his music on his pipe. And after three shrill notes, there is a swarm of rats that come pouring out of the houses and they follow after the Pied Piper and they're dancing and they're enjoying the music. And then the Pied Piper leads them to the river where they all plunge in and perish. All of them, except for one, the Julius Caesar rat. He lived, he lived to swim across the river and talk about what he experienced and he tells us hey I heard those notes and I started envisioning all of this food apples and fish and cider and pickles and jellies and oils and butter and I thought we were going to a feast and he was like I was in a trance I was listening to this music and just as I was about to put my hand out and reach out for the food, I realized it was the river and we all started drowning. So this rat gives us a first-hand account of basically, I was put into a trance, I didn't know what was happening, I thought I was eating food, and the Pied Piper tried to kill us and did kill everyone but Julius Caesar. So then we have all of the townspeople celebrating they're like yay all of the rats are gone they're ringing the bells they're cleaning up and then the pied piper pops up and he's like hey remember you owe me a thousand guilders now he's only asking for a thousand guilders and the mayor promised him fifty thousand what does this tell us about the pied piper he's honest he keeps his promises he's not greedy he's a good guy so then what does the mayor do oh my gosh the mayor is like, no, I'm not paying you. First, he insults him. He's like, why would I pay you? You're in this crazy coat looking like a crazy person. I'm not paying you. Then, number two, he says, basically, my problem solved. All the vermin are dead and they can't come back to life. So, sorry. The third thing he says is, I thought you knew I was joking about that. And then he tells the Pied Piper, you know what, I'm a, I'm a good guy, I'm gonna help you out. Give you a drink and I'll give you 50,000 guilders. Now, what does this tell us about the mayor? He's rude, he lies, he's greedy, he is insulting the piper, and honestly, if you were the Pied Piper and you were promised 1,000 guilders, actually 50,000, and then he was like, here, take 50, how'd that make you feel? Not good. So the Pied Piper comes back and he says, listen, I've got stuff to do. I have to go to Baghdad and help them with a nest of scorpions. I don't have time for this. I'm warning you. He threatens him. Folks who put me in a passion may find me piped to another fashion. Basically, Pied Piper's warning him and says, pay me or I'm going to use my charm against you. Now, if I were the mayor and I just saw this guy use a magical flute, this guy, here, use a magical flute 
and kill all of these rats in a river, would I pay him? Absolutely I would pay him. I wouldn't mess with him. I'd be like, here, take the money and go. But let's see what the mayor does. We know Victorian literature is all about teaching moral lessons. So, hmm, let's see. This is stanza 11. How, cried the mayor, do you think I broke being worse treated than a cook? Insulted by a lazy ribald with idle pipe and vesture piebald? You threaten us, fellow? Do your worst. Blow your pipe there till you burst. Okay, listen, I'm going to go out on a, on a limb here and say this was probably a really bad idea. Not only does the mayor say no, but again, he insults him back. And then he's like, do it. Do your worst. Do something bad. I dare you. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Mayor... Dares... Oh, that's really bad. Keep this in the back of your mind. He dared him. The mayor dares the Pied Piper to do his worst. So what do you think he's going to do? He's going to do his worst. And it is going to be teaching the mayor a lesson. Oh my gosh, what's he going to do? All right, here we go. This is where things start to get really dark. Okay, I'm sorry. Here we go. Stanza 12. All right, we're going to highlight important things as they are happening. Once more, the Pied Piper, he stepped into the street and to his lips again laid his long pipe of smooth straight cane and ere he blew three notes such sweet soft notes as yet musicians cunning never gave the enraptured air there was a rustling that seemed like a bustling of merry crowds jostling at pitching and hustling small feet were pattering wooden shoes clattering little hands clapping and little tongues chattering and like fowls in a farmyard when barley is scattering out came the children running all the little boys and girls with rosy cheeks and flax and curls and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls tripping and skipping ran merrily after the wonderful music with shouting and laughter Oh my gosh, guys. Is he going to throw the children in the river? What? Okay, so here, um, again, the Pied Piper, he was dared to do his worst. And he did tell us that he uses his music to entrance all types of different creatures. And so here he is. He's playing his music. And the music's going through the street, and out come the little children following him. This is, this is getting dark. Okay, again, I use just squiggles to make a mob. But there is literally every single child in the town of Hamelin right now is following the Pied Piper. Now, keep in mind, they are having a great time. They're enjoying themselves. They are not scared. They're not worried. And why is that? Well, we know because of the rat telling us his story that they are envisioning something else. They are under a trance. Okay, so um, we've got a lot of nice descriptive words here. There's wooden shoes. There's little hands. Um, little boys and girls. They have rosy cheeks. They have curly hair, sparkling eyes, teeth like pearls. And they are having a great time. They're skipping, they are dancing. So I'm gonna draw a happy, happy kid. It's a little bit creepy, that's okay. <laughs> well, 
Just try your best. Let's give them some hair. Oh, that made it worse. That's okay. Just color it in. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, the children, they are following the Pied Piper and they are excited. Okay, let's see what happens next. We are in stanza 13. What do you predict? Are they going to the river? All right, so let's go ahead and get our highlighter ready and we'll highlight important things as we see it. The mayor was dumb and the council stood, council stood as if they were changed into blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry to the children merrily skipping by and could only follow with the eye that joyous crowd at the piper's back. But how the mayor was on the rack and the wretched council bosoms beat as the piper turned from the high street to where the Wesser rolled its waters right in the way of their sons and daughters. Oh my gosh. Why are the townspeople not helping? Why are they not grabbing the children and saving them? Because they are under a trance too. They're stood standing there they stood as if they're blocks of wood they cannot they're unable to move all they can do is look with their eyes so we have all of the townspeople and their hearts are beating and they're like oh my gosh what's happening and they can only follow with their eyes they can only watch as their children are being taken to the river Okay, what's he gonna do? Is he really gonna drown these children? However, ooh, he turned from south to west into Kopelberg Hill his steps addressed and after him the children pressed. Great was the joy in every breast. He can never cross that mighty top. He's forced to let the piping drop and so we shall see our children stop when lo, as they reached the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed, and the piper advanced and the children followed. When all were in to the very last, the door in the mountainside shut fast. Okay, I'm actually going to divide this section here for us to look at. Okay, so the Pied Piper is playing his tune and all of the kids are following and he's about to go to the river and he stops and he turns and he goes to this Kobelberg Hill. And again, the kids are still having a great time. They're like, yeah, this is awesome. And so the parents are like, oh my gosh, this is so great. They're not gonna um, go to the river. They're gonna be forced to stop because of this mountainous hill. It's gonna be great. So they get to the mountainous hill and the Pied Piper is playing his tune. And then what happens? A portal opens up in the mountain. A magical portal. A wondrous magical portal opens up. And the Piper is like going in this thing. And the kids follow him because they're having a great time. And obviously they are in a trance right now. Magic wondrous portal. And the kids go inside this portal. And just as the music stops, the portal in the hillside closes. So now the kids are inside the mountain. They went into the portal after the Pied Piper. And remember, they are having a great time. They are not worried. They're like, yeah, this is great. Let's follow this magical guy into this portal on the side of the mountain. This is fine. Well, 
that was unexpected and very random. Nice job, Robert Browning, keeping us on our toes. All right, so the kids went into the portal. What happens next? Just like, guys, there was one rat that survived. There was the Julius Caesar rat. Guess what? Let's use this color. Did I say all? No. One was lame and could not dance all of the way. And in after years, if you would blame his sadness, he used to say, It's dull in our town since my playmates left. I can't forget that I'm bereft of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. For he led us, he said, to a joyous land, joining the town and just at hand, where waters gushed and fruit trees grew, and flowers put forth a fairer hue, and everything was strange and new. Where sparrows were brighter than peacocks here, and their dogs outran our fallow deer. And honeybees had lost their stings, and horses were born with eagle wings. And just as I became assured, my lame foot would be steadily cured. The music stopped, and I stood still and found myself outside the hill, left alone against my will, to go now limping as before and never hear of that country more. Aww. So this one kid, he did not make it into the mountain. He was not quick enough because he had an injured leg. So since he had an injured leg, he was like trying to keep up with them, but the mountain closed and he was left outside. And he tells us of what they were promised. They were in a trance just like the rats. Now, is this where they went? We have no idea. But it says the piper promised them a joyous land where waters gush, fruit trees grew. You know, this one I like, horses are born with eagle wings. And he was promised that his foot was going to be cured. So this here is an illusion. What is this an illusion to? What's a garden or a beautiful place with like special animals and special trees and you're healed when you're there? This is an illusion to the garden of Eden. That's what the children were promised. Now, we know that the rats didn't get what they were promised. Absolutely not. Instead, they were drowned and they died. So we're like, is this real? Is, did he take them to the Garden of Eden or did they die? Like we, we have no idea. So I'm going to draw some stuff here to represent what the children were promised which is the Garden of Eden and the animals are like special animals that you would never see anywhere else. So I really like the horse with eagle wings. So I'm going to draw that. You draw something that you think is cool that the children were promised. And, um, maybe I'll draw just like a beautiful river. And, um, mm -hmm. there's birds. And I'll draw one more thing. I'll do like some special trees. So these kids were promised a healing garden of Eden with special animals. And is that what they got when they went in here? Well, who knows? We'll never know. All right, this is it. This is the last uh, real stanza. We'll have one more after, but this is the last real stanza. Stanza. 14. Alas! Alas for Hamelin! There came into many burghers pate a text which says that heaven's gate opens to the rich at an easy rate as a needle's eye takes a camel in. Okay, so Hamelin 
uh, has this text that says that heaven's gate is hard. It's hard to get into heaven if you are rich because you have different values and you don't understand what's important to you. This is just making a comment in general um, about what they believe. The mayor sent east, west, north, and south to offer the piper by word of mouth wherever it was meant a lot to find him silver and gold to his heart's content if he'd only return the way he went and bring the children behind him. But when they saw twas a lost endeavor and the piper and dancers were gone forever, they made a decree that lawyers never should think their records dated duly if, after the day of the month and year, these words did not as well appear. And so long after what happened here on the 22nd of July, 1376, and the better to fit in, me in the better in memory to fix, the place of the children's last retreat, they called it the Pied Piper Street, where anyone playing on pipe or tabor was sure for future to lose his labor, nor suffered they holstery or tavern to shock with mirth a street so solemn. But opposite the place of the cavern, they wrote the story on a column and on the great church window painted the same to make the world acquainted with how their children were stolen away. And it stands there to this very day. And I must not omit to say, I'm going to pause this here. Okay, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of difficult language here. So let's stop in make sure that we know what's going on. So, the mayor sends people everywhere. And he's like, please tell the Pied Piper when you see him, he can have all of the silver and gold he wants as long as he brings back the children. But no one ever finds the Pied Piper and the children. They're gone forever. And even if they did find him, is the Pied Piper going to accept silver and gold to return the children? No, because he already lied. So he's probably going to lie again. So this was the attempt of the mayor tried to fix his mistake but couldn't. Okay, he tries to offer money, it's just not going to happen. So when it becomes clear that the kids are never coming back, the people in the town made some rules so the first one is they found the street where the kids were taken and they call it pied piper street and they say if anyone is caught playing a pipe on pied piper's street they will lose their labor they'll lose their job so basically if you play a musical instrument on pied piper street we're firing you and that's your punishment because we don't want any music any joyful music on this place where something terrible happened and then opposite the place where the cave is where like the portal opened up and the kids were taken they wrote a story the story of what happened to the children on a column so that it would never be forgotten and additionally to all of that there's also a church window where they had a stained glass painted window put in that told the story of the children as well um, how their children were stolen away so that people could see that and be reminded of what happened um, so in real life this does exist there is hamlin town it's actually in germany and there really is a pied piper street there really is this stone column across from a cave that has the story of what happened to the children and there really really is a stained glass window with the Pied Piper and um, him taking their children so you can actually visit this real life place and this really does exist all of this exists um, and actually the cover picture to this video is the stained glass window in real life in Hamlin Towns so it's kind of cool to see all right um, let's continue annotating and I must not omit to say that, so now we're talking about, well, what actually happened to the kids? 
In Transylvania, there's a tribe of alien people who ascribe to the outlandish ways and dress on which their neighbors lay such stress to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterranean prison into which they were trepanned a long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin Town in Brunswick land. But how or why, they don't understand. Okay, are you familiar with Transylvania? What would come out of a subterranean prison in Transylvania? Probably vampires. So they are suggesting that the creatures in Transylvania that plague the town, the vampires, are actually the children who have risen out of that subterranean prison. They've come out of the mountain. They've emerged from the mountain as these um, dark creatures, these alien people with these crazy ways of dressing and such. Um, so this is another allusion to um, This is an allusion to the Transylvania monsters actually being the Hamlin children that rose out of their uh, mountain portal prison. Wow, this is just getting out of hand crazy. All right, so last stanza. Stanza 15. So, Willie, let you and me be wipers of scores out with all men, especially pipers. And whether they pipe us free from rats or mice, if we've promised them aught, let us keep our promise. Here, the very last line of this narrative poem is the moral lesson. We know that Victorian literature always teaches a lesson. So here, the moral lesson is... Keep your promises, because if you don't keep your promises, probably a crazy piper dressed in a red and yellow long coat is going to play a magical tune and take your children into a portal in the side of a mountain. What? Crazy. But that is it. That is the end. The children are gone forever. Probably they've emerged as vampires in Transylvania, and the mayor learned a lesson that if you uh, promise something, then you must keep that promise. All right, thanks for reading. Please turn in your finished annotated poem and we're going to be using this for an analysis. And we're also gonna have some fun activities.